In this video, I'm going to introduce streams in Java, and we're going to talk about input streams and output streams. So in Java, streams, uh, they're kind of an abstract representation of input or output, right? Just like this book says, um, all they are is uh, they, they let you um, visualize or conceptualize data coming in and data coming out. And essentially, that's all most programs are. You just have data coming in, some kind of process into a program, and then data comes out of it. Um, and an input stream is a way to uh, abstract the um, data coming into the system, and an output stream is a way to abstract the data coming out of it. So for our examples, what we're going to do, we're going to use keyboard, keyboard uh, input as our input stream. So when you type on the keyboard, that's going to be coming from an input stream, and when you uh, print out to the console, that's going to be our output stream. So let's go ahead and look at some examples here. The first example I want to show is using an input stream reader, and we're going to pass in system.in. So uh, system.in system is just an input stream. Uh, I know that text you can't see very well, but input stream is the base class for, for all input streams, and then output stream is the base class for all output streams, and system.in is something you get automatically in your JVM. It just reads uh, input from standard in, and what we're going to do is wrap it in uh, an input stream reader so we can read that data in. Um, so I'm going to create a new input stream reader. I'm going to pass system.in into it, and then I'm going to read data from it. Now, what's going to happen when I run this program is we are going to type some data in. So I'll type hello. And what's happening here is the program blocked. As soon as it hit here, the program has blocked. And what that means is the program will not continue on until it hears data from me, or it gets data from that input stream. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And we're going to see it's going to run really quick and exit. So, And it read in my data one character at a time. And what happened here is the while loop, it just kept reading in data while there was data to read. And finally, when it encountered a new line character, it exited. So my H was converted. I converted that integer that it read in into a car data. And then I printed that out, my, my character byte. So um, I'm reading the data in again. And then while as long as it's not a new line, and so the new line character is what happens when you press the enter key. You get a new line. Um, so as long as that new line is not um, found, it just keeps going. So let's see, we can type uh, test. Same thing, right? One character at a time, it's reading it in. So this is just the basic way to do it with uh, input stream reader dot read. And that's only doing one character at a time in. But normally, what you're actually going to do is read into a buffer. So I'm going to show you an example of manually reading into a buffer. And what a buffer actually is, it's just an array. And the buffer, instead of reading in data one byte at a time or one character at a time, you can read it into an array of some certain length and then read things in in chunks. So rather than doing one of the smallest element at a time, you're reading chunks in. And your program becomes more efficient doing it that way. So in this uh, this um, program right here, I'm going to manually create a buffer. It's going to be a character array of 1,000 uh, characters long. And I'm going to call input stream reader read on a buffer. And it's going to read the characters into my array. So I'm manually doing this. And we're going to see later there are actually buffered readers. And the buffered readers automatically do the setting up buffer arrays and then reading into arrays for us. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to run this program. It's going to block it read. And I'll type hello world. And uh, it's going to convert that array into a string. It's going to say to uppercase. And then it's going to print out with an output stream writer. Um, before we get too far, I'm just going to throw a breakpoint in here, 
and I'm going to run this in debug mode. I'm just going to say debug as Java application. Uh, we now have the different view. This view is just for debugging. I'm actually going to switch back to the other view because I like it better for what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> so the the way that you go onto the next line in the program is whoops I forgot to find that out. <laughs> it's a uh, F6. That's step over. So we're going to keep pressing F6. So I'm going to hit F6, and you're going to see it's going to print write a car. Right, write a car. And so I'm going to, well, I don't know why it says write a car, because I actually wanted to say more like write a line of text. Um, OK, anyway. Uh, the, the input stream reader is going to get past system.n, and again, that's an input stream from the keyboard. Um, and then now with our input stream reader, we're creating a character array, and you're going to see the character array is empty. I can hover over this, and I just have a big empty character array. There's nothing in here. And I'm going to call read, and now my character array is going to block right here while I call read. And I'll say hello world and hello uh, YouTube. Now that character array is going to be populated with data. So you can see that character array, what I typed in there, it filled that buffer, that array, with data from the input stream, which is what I typed into the console. Okay, does that make sense? This is a manual buffer creation. Um, and then I'm going to use the new string constructor. And what it does is it lets me pass in a character array and create a stream from it, or a string from it. So now I have my string. That's exactly what I typed in, right? And now um, I'm going to call two uppercase just so you can see that I can convert and deal with that data now as I normally would. So I set the value of my input to my input uppercase, right? Um, now we're going to use an output stream and you may have known this already, but system.out is an output stream. So when you call system.out.println, you're printing into the console with an output stream already. So this is not going to be any difference from calling println, really. But what we're going to do is call output stream writer system.out, and that's going to give me a new output stream. I'm going to write data into it. And this will be interesting because with my output stream writer, I'm writing a string into it. And it actually accepts a string, so it will know how to process that. And I went through that line, output stream writer dot write, and I didn't get anything written to the terminal. That's because the buffer was not filled up. So if I want to actually force it to write out to the terminal, I have to call flush so that the buffer inside of the output stream writer flushes the stream out into the terminal. Okay, so when I go to the next line, it's actually going to print out hello world. And then finally, my program will be done. So hit play. OK. Um, so this is this was an example of a manual buffer creation. Now, now let's change it. Let's go one step further and use a buffered reader and just do all this stuff manually. Um, so in this program, I have an input stream reader from system.in. I'm going to pass that into a buffered reader. In the buffered reader, I can just call read line, much more convenient, right? Instead of manually creating this buffer and then reading it into the buffer and then converting it to a string, I can just call reader.readline and I get my line in. And I can close this immediately. So I'm going to run this program. I'm going to type uh, hello world, of course, and I'm blocked right here, and as soon as I type that, it's going to go into the next line. And you're going to see in the program, we're going to keep going and hit this buffered writer. And this is the same as our output stream writer. It's pretty similar, except it has a buffer. And we are going to print out through it, and I'm going to close it. So actually, let's not close it. <clears throat> so I'm going to hit Enter. And the rest of the program is going to run. What you typed, hello world, flush. And that was it. Um, and the reason it flushes is because I just captured the output stream. So let's, uh, let's comment all of this out. Um, 
same thing I did it with a print writer this time though so print writer takes an output stream and um, I it's just a very similar class to buffered writer as you can see I printed out to it um, this is this is essentially the same thing the print line is doing we're just out we're writing out to an output stream so hopefully this video helped uh, you to understand streams everything in the Java program the data you're getting in you can visualize it as an input stream and you can visualize the data going out as an output stream and it's just kind of data flowing through your system you've got data in some kind of processing and then data going out 